Today, we're actually at the offices of Liquid Te Telecom, who are a sponsor of, of the Inspirational Women's Series, and speaking to Susan, the, the Chief Executive Officer. Susan, thank you very much for doing this. So we're really grateful for that Liquid, has, Liquid Telecom has actually decided to sponsor the Inspirational Women's Series. Mm -hmm. Why did you do so? Well, um, to start with, uh, Liquid Telecom is in the business of providing connectivity in this country, and we are a very big player. Um, starting from the back end in terms of carrying traffic for other providers, we are among the foremost in the business. So besides doing that, which is what we do for, for a living as an entity in this country, we also do other things that other people might consider soft things. Yes. And this is uh, partly to, to, to do with CSR or corporate social responsibility. Um, in that, we focus mainly on education, mm -hmm. health and youth entrepreneurship. But as an entity as well, Liquid is very big on promoting women. Great. So we do have women in our in the midst. And for us, when you spoke to us about it, we felt that this is something we can identify with and partner with you. So Susan, we are both lawyers. We actually studied at the University mm -hmm. of Zambia. And then you've transitioned into ICT. It's an amazing journey and a lot of uh, achievement. Do you want to share your journey with us and uh, inspire others to say it's actually possible to switch? Well, yes, Monica. Uh, thankfully for me, I made a decision to study law from very early on in my life. And I like to say this because for a young person, it's important to be decisive on what you want to do mm -hmm. very early on in your life. So having studied law at the University of Zambia, I went on to, to qualify to practice as a lawyer. At that time, we called it Law Practice Institute, mm -hmm. which is what is now called Zia. Yeah, and I true. must say, I'm quite proud to say that I did very well at Zia with a couple of distinctions and some fantastic. merits, given the record it has. But fast forward, I spent in excess of 23, 24 years mm -hmm. in the ICT, telecoms, technology industry. Mm -hmm. And I have done everything from regulation mm -hmm. to operations to management. And I'm actually qualified to practice yes. uh, telecoms policy regulation and management, Fantastic. having uh, obtained a qualification at the Vets University in South Africa. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and I want to ask you, you know, um, even in my own career, the switch was not without challenges or barriers, you know. Um, there are many a time when people doubt because you're a woman that you can actually uh, sit, you're, you're meant to be in the room, or many a time when you're the only woman in the room, yeah. and I'm sure that has happened before yeah. to you. Um, do you want to share a few of those instances and how you overcame them? Because today, to sit at the helm of mm -hmm. such a large institution, I'm sure, and again, and I, I've got to say, emphasize, telecoms is still very male dominated. Yeah. How did you overcome those barriers? So. You're very right. Barriers existed then and mm -hmm. they still exist now. Yes. But I think for me, it's to a certain extent, paid a blind eye to those barriers mm -hmm. because more often than not, I was the woman, the only woman in the room, yeah. in a workshop, mm -hmm. in a training program. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but also the, the desire to learn and the willingness to do everything and anything mm -hmm. helped me to learn mm -hmm. so many different things. I became the kind of a barrier or the bridge between technology and the soft issues, the law. Mm -hmm. uh, given that I had to interpret the law yes. for the engineers, for for the economists, mm -hmm. so that gave me the advantage to be able to understand everything. So, where from where I see it, I think I qualified to be called an engineer. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's really important. It is. Yeah, yes. but but I think that uh, there are still barriers even now mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you look at the young people who are coming up. Now we're having a lot of young people starting their own coding companies, yes, yes. but they are doing this on their own, which is very commendable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they're not being given those opportunities by the big corporates to yeah. code for them or to write programs for them. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they are struggling. And if they make it, it's maybe because somebody else from out there has yes. given them the recognition. We need to get our, our companies support these young upcoming women exactly. and most of the people that are doing these things are women yes yes yeah. yes so you are seeing a lot of women come through coming through at sort of junior level in the workforce that's, that's fantastic and in terms then if i if i if, what would you be saying to a young woman who wants to a career in ict who wants to be a coder or who wants actually to to work in telecoms or i mean ICT, ict is such a big field yeah. what would you be saying to them saying you know yeah it's difficult mm -hmm. but for me, it's not more difficult for women mm -hmm. than it is for men. Okay. So whatever a man can do, 
a woman oh, can, can do, do, maybe even better. Mm-hmm. So the women just need to develop the confidence that whatever a man can do, I can also do. Mm-hmm. And go out there and present yourself and you'll be able to do it. Gain the recognition mm-hmm. out of being able to demonstrate your abilities. It's fantastic, fantastic. And I've got to ask you, because it's such a huge transition to, to be a CEO of a large business. What did it take to do the transition? And you were um, you were very much in legal before, and now it's it is um, very much now management management. You know, people skills. I, I, I'm really curious about what it took and what I'm mean, I'm sure it's still learning and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So so I think the base I had was quite an advantage to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I made a decision to leave a very nice job at the regulator. Yes. And move into an operator which meant I was now going to start to report to the people that you used to work for. Yes, <laughs> it could be difficult, but I decided that's what I wanted to do. And it helped me to learn the other side of the business. Mm-hmm. And in, in the in the MNO where I worked, I was exposed to everything from technical, from marketing, commercial, sales. Again, I was in the legal regulatory team, which meant the focal point of the business for any Excellent. anybody that the business interacted with. That so the transition was actually not as much of a challenge. It was just sort of well, getting it into it. It did look like a challenge then <laughs> because we were pretty much starting the regulatory team mm-hmm. when I joined uh, the MNO. Mm-hmm. I was just starting the regulatory team. The other side of the coin is that to a certain extent, Everybody else seems to know what the law is better than you, who's the lawyer. Who's and they the haven't expert. read the law in most yeah. cases. <laughs> yeah. So people will try and convince you to do what they want you to do, but you need to make them understand that, look, in order for this business to continue, we need to comply with A, B, C, D. So I was already very well acquainted with the law, so I needed to just learn the business the commercial side of the business. Very tough, Mm -hmm. given that most people go to study law because they don't want to deal with the math. But when you go into the business, you have to deal with the math. (laughs) And that for me is one other thing that our young people have to grasp. We need to come to terms with the math, Mm -hmm. the technology side of Mm -hmm. things, engineering and science. That really positions you super in terms of being able to manage a position like this. So Susie, you know, I'm a, I'm a new mom um, and I'm also a business owner and uh, I'm learning that actually it is a lot harder than I actually ever thought. Mm-hmm. You're a mother of three, you're a CEO, you're like the superwoman. How do you actually do this? How do you manage? Monica, it, you put it so correctly. It's hard. I'm a mother of four actually. Four? I, I said three. <laughs> Four, two girls and two boys, wow, wow. ranging in ages between nine and twenty. <laughs> that tells you that I have to deal with different things, different hormones, different, emotions, yes, different yes, schools. Yes. yes, but I think um, we are fortunate that uh, we're living in an age where our children are quite enlightened, mm-hmm. more enlightened than we were. So it's very easy to engage them, mm-hmm. and I find that engaging them on how to deal with life, life issues, school. Of course, I expect them to excel much better than I did. Mm-hmm. I didn't have this level of engagement from my parents, but I have to engage with them. So we have to do a lot of activities together outside school on weekends, just so that we keep the bond. Otherwise, I could easily lose them. And what else? I mean, what, what has provided you the foundation to be as successful as you are? What do you attribute um, your yes your your success to? Well, so many different people have been there in my life to support me in order for me to be the kind of person that I am. Um, first and foremost, my parents. Uh, obviously, they provided the ground for us to be well-grounded people. Um, people like to say humble, but it's not humble. It's grounded. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Seeing yourself for what it is, and then in the schools. I had one really good teacher. I went to a uh, convent school, Mm -hmm. and that provides you with an environment that really raises a whole person. So lots of credit to the Dominican Convent School of Ndola. Mm -hmm. Um, Fast forward in my professional life, I've had so many good people nurture me, Mm -hmm. uh, starting from when I was doing my legal intern. Unfortunately, my my senior died. Mm -hmm. He should have been happy to see me today. But over the years, um, um, and into liquid, mm-hmm. uh, much credit goes to the people that saw it fit to appoint me into the position of leadership. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, the regional CEO, Mr. Makamore, and the group chief operating officer, Mr. Mokos, who, after the interview, 
thought that I was the right candidate for the role. So um, a lot of credit to them. Now, Susan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for considering, uh, for actually sponsoring Inspirational Women series. It's the first time we're doing it, and we're really encouraged by corporates such as yourself and the focus that you have. Particularly, we know that ICT is going to leapfrog this country. So thank you very much for sponsoring us.